A new report came out just today that might look average on the surface, but when it comes to the Bank of Canada, it could have a huge impact on the way they make their mind up when it comes to their upcoming decision on Wednesday, December 7th. That's when they're setting their new interest rate, and this could switch the way that they think about that. And as interest rates potentially rise higher, we've got some evidence that the big banks in Canada are putting together a sort of reserve fund to make sure that they have enough money on hand for any bad loans that they have on their books. So let's take a look at this new report and talk about why it could change how drastic the Bank of Canada's decision is, as well as how all this relates to the big banks and the reserve funds that they're putting together in the case of some bad loans. So let's get right into it and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. The report that we're going to look at is the Labour Force Survey for November 2022. If you remember last month, we actually saw a dramatic increase in the amount of new jobs created in Canada, which looks good on the surface, especially if you're someone who's looking to uh, become employed, but uh, uh, that tight labor market statistic doesn't look as good in the eyes of the Bank of Canada, who are worried most about inflation and the effect that a tight labor market can have on that inflation long term. We're going to flip back to that report, but I think this article does a good job of showing us the numbers in a more clear way. Everything in the brackets is uh, last month's number that we saw, and everything um, that's not in the brackets is related to this month. So for unemployment, we actually saw a decrease in the amount of people unemployed, but at the very same time, we saw an increase or a decrease also in the employment rate. So uh, less people unemployed and also less people employed. How does that work? Well, that relates to the participation rate. If you're not familiar with the participation rate, this sort of talks about how many Canadians over the entire country are actually looking for jobs actively, right? Are actually um, either working or actively looking for a job. These are the people that are included in this participation rate. Um, the people who aren't included in this are people who are retired or just simply aren't looking for work. So we saw the amount of people who are participating in the economy go down by just like uh, the other ones, 0.1%. And all of these numbers are gonna become relevant when we start talking about how this is gonna impact the Bank of Canada's decision coming up on Wednesday, this next upcoming Wednesday. Um, but take a look at this. Here's a stat that I think is also quite important for this conversation, is that we saw that there was a year-over-year -year growth in the average hourly wage of employees um, of 5.6%. This is compared to last November, right? We're seeing the average wage that people are paid um, increased by 5.6% when compared to last November's number. Now, of course, that 5 0.6% wage growth is under the current 6.9 CPI inflation. So wages are not keeping up with inflation. Again, this is continued on, um, but this has a, a bigger impact on what the Bank of Canada is thinking around these employment numbers and the inflation rate that we're seeing. All the numbers we just talked about, the unemployment rate being relatively low, as well as the average wage gain being relatively high, again, compared to history, not compared to inflation. Well, this suggests that we are currently in a very tight labor market meaning it's relatively easy for people to get jobs and, and uh, industry and in business are having trouble finding workers for those jobs, needing uh, to raise wages as a result of this. But this is counter to what the Bank of Canada is actively trying to do, right? They are trying to increase the unemployment number and they're trying to decrease the amount of these wage gains that they're seeing for two different reasons. Now, first we talk about um, the, how many people have jobs or what that unemployment number is. Generally, the Bank of Canada, when they raise interest rates, incentivizes uh, businesses to sort of cut back on employees. There's less spending in the economy because it costs more to take on debt. So with higher interest rates that expect employment to go down, unemployment to go up, and as a result, people to spend less in the economy, right, to cool down the economy, to cool down inflation, which is the main thing they're fighting against. So over the long term, they likely want to see this unemployment number go up at least a little bit to indicate that the market is cooling just like they want it to. Now, when it comes to the wage increases that we're seeing, uh, that 5.6% compared to last year, the Bank of Canada does have a unique fear around wage prices continuing to to increase over the long term, and that's what they call a wage price spiral. The idea that when you give uh, employees a higher wage, they'll go and spend that in the economy, and that produces more demand in the economy, producing more inflation, requiring people to provide more wages to people because of the cost of living being higher, right? Creates this cycle of inflation sort of being self-fulfilling. 
And the Bank of Canada definitely doesn't want that. Now, some people will say that this wage price spiral theory is uh, not exactly something that people should be looking at. Certainly, Unifor, the labor union, has pushed back against this wage price spiral idea, saying that's just something that businesses use to make sure that you don't get your raise. Um, but of course, that's what a labor union would say. So all of this suggests that the Bank of Canada might be more aggressive with their next interest rate hike. We're sort of expecting it to between, be between the quarter of a percentage point to three quarters of a percentage point increase in interest rates. Um, so we could see us sort of leaning towards the higher end because of the data that we're seeing saying, okay, the labor market's still tight. We haven't totally destroyed the economy yet. But one important thing to note is that, well, the this jobs data, it is lagging, right? We would only see the effects of the Bank of Canada's interest rate hikes over the long term, and maybe even the interest rate hikes that we saw um, at the beginning of this rate hike cycle, where they went up an entire percentage point in, in one meeting. Well, we could could be not even seeing the results of that yet in the market. And it's especially hard to get a good idea of which way wages are going when we're looking at only year over year numbers. So let's look a little bit more carefully, right? We talked about um, uh, the 5.6% being compared to last November, to this November, right? A 5.6% increase in hourly wages for Canadians. But let's see what, uh, what direction we're um, either increasing or decreasing the rate at which we are uh, changing wages over months, right? Oh, instead of over years. Let's, let's dig into this a bit. So we're going to be looking at this row right here. This is all employees in all industries. Shows what the average hourly rate is here in Canada for employees. We can see this all the way from January 2022 all the way to the numbers we just got today, November 2022. But we're going to focus in a little bit more on today. So let's zoom in. What I'm interested in is at what rate are we increasing wages on a month to month basis? And does that make us think any differently about the way the Bank of Canada is looking at this 5.6% year? year over year rate. So I've done a little bit of math behind the scenes and what I've done is compared August 2022 to September 2022 and saw what rate that increase was month to month and then I've multiplied that by 12 to find out, okay, if that rate were to sustain, what would be the yearly uh, wage price increase? So if we were to extrapolate this month over month data to the, what the year over year rate would be, we saw between August and September actually a 13% increase in wages, as well as uh, the next month we saw a 102 percent increase if you were to again extrapolate that out uh, and then uh, the most recent number is that that has slowed a little bit um, going to 6.4 uh, percent again if you were to extrapolate that month over month data to a year over year number. So there's a chance the Bank of Canada could be looking at this and saying hey we kind of recognize that the interest rate hikes that we've done in the past might not be showing up in all of the data that we're looking at yet so looking at uh, this trend month over month could give us a better idea and we can see what that trend is, is that the pace at which wages are increasing tends to be going down, at least looking at the past four months. So that makes me think that perhaps the Bank of Canada won't go as hard on this next uh, interest rate hike. Again, we expect it to between, be between 0.25 and 0.75%, um, somewhere in that range. Uh, looking at just the, the top level jobs data, you could say, hey, maybe they're gonna lean more to the 50, 75 range. But if you look at the rate of growth of wages month over month, that sort of is more of a, a dovish signal that they could be uh, only increasing it by a quarter of a percentage point. Again, we're gonna find out on Wednesday, December 7th. But either way, it's expected that rates will rise again when the Bank of Canada makes this decision, which means it's gonna have an effect on homeowners and their mortgages, especially people with variable rate mortgages. And this is when we're going to get into what the banks just released this week. We got the earnings reports from all of the major banks in Canada this week, and it seems that they're creating these special funds to make sure that in the event that these mortgages default, well, they have enough money to cover it. And we can see just how much they've increased these reserve funds in this chart here. Here they call it P. PCLs, and that stands for provisions for credit loss. Credit loss just being any time that you're lending money and you expect that credit that you've given out to be lost, right? They're not going to pay it back. Um, that's a credit loss. So these are the provisions or the funds that they're putting aside um, in expectation of credit loss. The pale blue bars here are last year's uh, quarter four provisions for credit loss. And the blue bar is what's looking what it's looking like as of today. You can see in every single bank's case a dramatic increase 
from what it looked like last year with Scotiabank putting around um, 525 likely million dollars aside for this, um, almost 400 at RBC, um, a little bit less at the smaller bank, National Bank of Canada. TD's putting over 600 million dollars into this fund for themselves, a little over 400 for CIBC, and a little over 200 million for Bank of Montreal. So they're expecting that they're going to see more loan losses, right? Credit losses and they're provisioning for that, provisions for credit losses. And when we look at some of the housing data, it shows us why this might be a prudent decision by the banks when we see the average amount that uh, these lenders are losing when they have a mortgage loss. You can see the increase here from uh, 2021 quarter three going up dramatically to 2022 quarter three um, of uh, on average, each of these losses being around 95 um, to $100,000 at this point here. We haven't seen where quarter four is yet, but it might be even larger. Now, just because the loan loss is getting higher doesn't mean that the average amount of people who are actually defaulting on their loans is going up significantly. What this sort of points at is that, well, um, if there was a loan loss in the past when we were in the bull market for real estate where real estate prices were going up significantly, well, these lenders could take the home and then sell the home and probably get all of their money back from the loan. But in today's bear market for housing, housing prices are down. Well, it's a little bit different. You might actually have to take a loss and they're saying on average the losses that they're taking are around $95,000. And you can see the actual amount of people who are defaulting on their mortgages going down over time when we're looking at the 2022 quarter three data, around 0.03% of Canadians are defaulting on their mortgages as of right now. However, for a default to actually start to take place, well, you have to um, not pay your mortgage for at least a quarter, I believe three months of non-payment will sort of start that process. So we could be sort of seeing this uptick in the near future as more of these high interest rates get passed on to consumers and we'll see if there's a breaking point for how long people can keep on paying these higher rates and if they're at any point they'll actually make that decision to okay we got to pay for food we're not going to pay our mortgage. So in any event it'll be interesting to see what the Bank of Canada does next week especially in the midst of this uh, this data about jobs and what the big banks are doing. Unfortunately before the Bank of Canada's next decision on December 7th we're not going to see any new CPI numbers or the new inflation numbers. We're not going to see that. That's I think on December 21st or something like that, just before Christmas. We'll see if the Bank of Canada's interest rate rising actions have had a meaningful effect on cooling the Canadian economy. Uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to watch. I'm curious what you think about all this. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think that the banks heard being uh, prudent because you're going to see mortgage defaults rising in the future? Or do you think maybe this might be a little bit overstated? Either way, let me know in the comment section. I read every single one and I try to reply to as many as I possibly possibly can. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out significantly. Uh, we've just hit the 60,000 subscriber mark, so I'm happy about that and I'm happy these videos are reaching Canadians and are at least finding the videos useful a little bit. But with all that said, my usual standoff or sign off, not a standoff, I, I, not something like a gunpoint in a Western. Oh man, I, I, it's been a long day, I guess. But with all that said, thanks so much for watching everybody. Really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.